Welcome to another episode of Almost Ordained. I'm your host, David, and we are continuing our series called Faith in a Time of COVID-19. I know this coronavirus seems like something new under the sun, and none of us have ever experienced anything like it, unless you're old enough to remember the Spanish flu pandemic of 1918. But there have been other pandemics in history, like the Spanish flu I just mentioned. History can teach us a lot about how to handle a crisis and how not to handle it. Now, to get to something more recent, in 2014, many of us heard of Ebola for the first time. It was an epidemic, not a pandemic, meaning it wasn't worldwide, but still pretty widespread. In this case, nations of West Africa caught the brunt of it. Eventually, it made its way to the U.S., but it was pretty well contained. Only a handful of people died from it here. So yes, people were concerned at first, but our medical experts were able to quarantine it and somehow find a treatment pretty quickly. So while it was very disruptive to the region of West Africa, it wasn't so much here. Coronavirus, on the other hand, has disrupted every area of life, not only in the U.S., but all over the world. The threat of Ebola was not the same here as coronavirus now. But as I said, I think we can learn lessons from cases like this in history. Now, really, the reason I'm going back is a lot of false prophets I warned you about in season one are still operating as if they never got anything wrong in their predictions for prosperity and divine healing in 2020 and God's protection over the United States against COVID-19 and claims that it would not become a pandemic. No matter what they claim, none of that came true. And in previous episodes, I showed you from the Bible that that means they are false prophets. They need to repent and stop prophesying. But most of them are not repenting. They are doubling down. I'm going to look at a case of one of them who spent time in West Africa when Ebola broke out there. He claims the epidemic broke because of the prayers of himself and his partners who watch him subscribe to his newsletter and send him money. Uh, But I'm going to show you the data paints a different picture. I'm going to show you how he twisted events to make it look like he was responsible for turning Ebola around. Why should we care? I'm going to predict that when we finally get control over the coronavirus, He is going to try to take credit for it again, in similar fashion. I'm predicting, not prophesying. I'm not claiming any direct revelation from God. But as Ecclesiastes said, what has been done will be done. There is nothing new under the sun. The tricks they pulled in the past are the same as they will try to pull today. Now, on August 6th, 2014, one of the self-proclaimed prophets said he was at a service in West Africa where Ebola had started and where most cases developed. At someone's request, I'm not naming names, and he claims the Lord told him, I set you two together today. You take authority over that Ebola virus and that demon that's giving life to it. Now, these people who call themselves prophets will say, God told me that such and such. And it was no more God than the man on the moon. Also, they will attribute every sickness and disease to demons or Satan. As I said in the previous videos, a virus is natural, not spiritual but they insist on treating it like a demon to take authority over and cast out. So he was saying things like, Satan, bow your knee. Ebola, bow your knee. 
We take authority over you in the name of Jesus Christ. Take your hands off God's property. Keep your hands off God's property. That means me, my family, my household is off limits to you, Satan. We stand together for protection against every plan and every disease of the devil. I command the angels to lift us up so that our feet, foot will not strike a stone. Uh, Psalm 91, again, taking it out of context. And keep us in all our ways. We bind it in Jesus' name all over the world. Okay, that's what he prayed on August 6th, 2014. Um, and he was... Uh, a little bit louder than I was. He, he does tend to get loud when he's, especially when he's commanding and decreeing and declaring and casting out sickness and commanding the weather. Oh yeah, he'll command the weather too. Um, <laughs> so it goes on in that sort of way. He claims one of their missionaries who was in the hospital was cured during that service. There is no way to know whether it was their prayer or the care he received in the hospital. But I'm inclined to believe the latter. And actually, we have no way of knowing if he did get better at the same time or not. All we have is his claim that it happened. Now, he gave a date, August 6th, 2014. He claimed not only... His missionary got well. Ebola stopped spreading after their prayer service, he claims. He may believe he stopped an international pan epidemic because Jesus gave him authority over sickness, disease all over the world. But looking at the data, I don't see any evidence that Ebola stopped spreading because of anything he did. A CDC timeline shows activity in the nations of Liberia, Guinea, and Sierra Leone. Okay, now this is a no-budget program, as I've <laughs> explained once or twice before. I don't know how to share my computer screen with you, so um, I'll make the link available in the description. Right now, what I can tell you, on this chart, the, um, they don't show exact dates. They just show months, and you kind of have to approximate between the months about what date we're talking about. But I can see in Liberia, the epidemic started in May. There was a sharp increase from early July to late August. In early September the number of cases started going down and kept going down through well into 2015. In Sierra Leone, the number of cases went up in April and down in June. Then it started going up again. In mid-August, it went up sharply before declining again in late October to early November and eventually died out in 2015. In Guinea, Cases went up in March 2014, down in April, up in May, down in June, up and down in July, and again in August. Then it went up sharply in September, peaked, and started going down, eventually dying off in 2015. In each of those countries, the peak of the disease happened months after the prayer service, when he claims the disease stopped spreading. On September 30th, about seven weeks after the prayer service that supposedly broke the power of Ebola all over the world, the first case in the U.S. was confirmed. Three more cases, U.S. cases were confirmed in October. Sounds like it, it was still spreading. So why did it keep spreading and increasing after August 6th, after the prayer service? He claims after the prayer service, the virus was getting under control, 
Then there was a surge afterwards. The scenario he describes could perhaps match Guinea with its many ups and downs. But even there, it peaked toward the end of September. And even as it, even as it came down, the number of cases were above August 6 levels well into December. And remember, he took authority over it, not just in Guinea, but all over the world. And in each of these nations, the number of cases went up sharply after August 6th, not down. But he has an explanation like he always does. He claims that God told him it gained strength, quote, because my people are afraid of it. They're talking about it. This is word of faith theology, and it's not only heretical, it's dangerous, especially when dealing with an epidemic or pandemic. Again, I remind you, the figures from the CDC do not show any decrease after August 6th. They only show increase, and sharp ones at that. It didn't really get under control in the countries most affected until about April 2015, eight months after he took authority over Ebola. Word of Faith Theology claims everything comes about because you speak it into existence. If you believe it when you say it, it will come to pass. Therefore, any sickness comes about because you talk it into existence. You are afraid and you talk about it. And what you fear and speak comes to pass, just like what you believe and speak. According to them, we speak things into existence through faith, just like God does. God said, let there be light, and there was light. Therefore, everything in your life is because you spoke it into existence, including Ebola, or now coronavirus. So don't be, speak coronavirus. Don't be afraid. That's how you get it. No, it's not a stronghold or a demon. It's not a principality or power. It's a virus. You get it because someone coughed on you or sneezed on you or breathed on you or sneezed or coughed or breathed onto a surface, and you touched that surface, and you touched your hand to your eye or to your mouth, or maybe to your nose, you know, go pick, pick your nose with an infected finger. That's how you catch it. Not because you spoke it. You don't speak viruses into your body. And you don't speak viruses out of your body either. You don't speak viruses out of existence, which is what this guy is claiming he's doing. He did it, well, at least three times that I saw, and, you know, saying that coronavirus is destroyed forever, is destroyed, not will be destroyed, is destroyed forever. Said that in March, said it twice in March, once in April. Look where we are now. Is it destroyed? Mm, no. It didn't work when he did it for coronavirus, and it didn't work when he did it for Ebola. But he, But you see how he's trying to get credit for it. So, you know, Ebola, coronavirus, did not come, did not spread because you listened to media reports and got a little nervous. Now, don't panic. I know, I know it's possible to take fear too far and to go overboard. But don't use that as an excuse for stupid behavior that will inevitably cause the virus to spread. And don't claim you're doing it because of faith. That is not faith. That is denial. That is false prophets saying peace, peace, when there is no peace. <clears throat> and again, as I've said in previous episodes, 
There is no Bible verse that promises to give you immunity from coronavirus or any virus. Immunity happens naturally, like from a vaccine. Or after you get the virus and you recover it from it, you have immunity from it after that, though it may be only partial immunity. We don't know yet. That's how you get immunity. You don't get it by quoting Bible verses or claiming authority over it. Authority that you don't have. And neither do these self-proclaimed prophets or apostles or faith healers or whatever they're calling themselves. They don't have that authority either. So don't listen to anyone who says that it came about because people were afraid and spoke it. Don't believe anyone taking authority over the virus or decreeing against it or declaring you're healthy unless it's your doctor saying you tested negative or releasing you from quarantine. But when it came to get, getting rid of Ebola, he took credit, but he shared it. Uh, he con concluded by saying that he kept battling the Ebola in the spirit, in the spirit. He kept praying against it, and he kept running up against a wall and couldn't find the right angle to attack it, but then said, when we stood together, meaning him and the people who follow him, what he calls covenant partners, when we stood together, it broke the grip of Ebola, and it stopped spreading, and it went away. He said before he broke the grip of Ebola and it stopped spreading after that prayer service on August 6th. Now he's saying it came back after that, after it stopped spreading, after he broke the grip, it came back. And so now he's claiming when his partners stood together against it. That broke the grip of Ebola, and that stopped it from spreading. Which was it? Either you broke the grip and stopped it from spreading it on August 6th in that prayer service, or you did it eight months after eight months of prayer and battling in the Spirit, eight months of you and your partners praying, it can't be both. Either it stopped in August 2014 or April 2015. But, uh, you know, you can make any claim when you don't bother with facts. So, according to him, Ebola went away all over the world because he and his partners took authority over it and prayed against whatever demon was responsible for it. So, I guess we can thank them and their partners that Eb Ebola eventually stopped spreading nearly a year after that prayer service on August 6th, 2014, when he says he took authority over Ebola all over the world and declared it was bound and defeated in Jesus' name. I suppose that's possible, but I have a different take on it. Based on how I've seen Americans behave around coronavirus, I'd say Ebola waxed and waned and eventually went away because of the natural laws of how viruses spread. They spread for a while. Then they stop spreading because people get wise to it and take the right precautions. They quarantine, wear masks, socially distance, and pay attention to overall hygiene, especially washing hands. Then they relaxed and said, I'm ready for this to be over. We've got to get the economy going again. We've got to make money again. And they reopened for business without social distancing masks or sanitizing surfaces. 
and the virus spread again. Then they were like, well, dadgum, you mean just because we're ready for it to be over doesn't mean it's over? So they wised up and went back to lockdown, staying at home, socially distancing, masks, and sanitizing, and the virus stopped spreading. That's according to, you know, um, experts at the Centers for Disease Control, the National Institutes of Health, the World Health Organization, and all the top doctors in the world. That is the natural progression of most outbreaks, epidemics, or pandemics. So, if the spread of Ebola slowed down, but then came back, it's not because people got scared and spoke of Ebola again. It's because people didn't have enough fear of it. They relaxed too soon and stopped doing the measures they had been doing to stop the spread. They started going, getting out and about started going to work again, and it started spreading again. And in cases where you see the infection rates rising and falling a few times, it's because they went through a few cycles of relaxing too soon and locking down again until they finally got stuck. They finally stuck to the plan long enough for the virus to stop spreading and die out. Now, The CDC has taken a few hits to um, from people who don't believe in that coronavirus is real or COVID-19. You should note that in the midst of the Ebola crisis, the CDC and other medical organizations took measures to train, equip, and send out health care workers where they were needed. The, 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 the disease stopped spreading because of that. Hey, no budget, that means no retakes. Not because anyone made faith declarations or decreed anything or took authority over it. It didn't go away because people stopped being afraid or stopped speaking about it. The good folks at the CDC know how viruses behave. You stop their spread by sa following sound medical advice not by decreeing and declaring and claiming authority that you don't have. Ebola was not a demon to cast out or sprinkle holy water on. It was a virus. Viruses spread according to laws of biology, not through demons and not through fear. Substitute coronavirus for Ebola and everything is the same. Since the country reopened for business in earnest last month, COVID-19 cases have been spiking around the country. In some cities, there are, they have no more ICU beds available because they're full of COVID-19 patients. If these so-called prophets have all this authority over sickness and disease, why aren't they going into these hospitals and healing them? Why aren't they going to towns like Jesus did and healing everyone there? Not only of COVID-19, but any other disease. The fact that they have not done that, that they will not do that, tells you everything you need to know about any of these so-called faith healers or prophets. They are charlatans and wolves in sheep's clothing. If there was even one that was legit, we would have heard of them healing people with COVID-19 for real. And doctors would be able to verify it. There is faith that is good for getting through a pandemic and faith that is bad. Good faith can be the calm in the midst of the storm. Bad faith tells you to take authority and command that storm to stop because you don't have that authority. Good faith tells, helps you stay strong mentally and spiritually through troubled times. Bad faith tells you you are immune from bad times and diseases if you just believe 
if you just stop being afraid, if you just stop speaking it. I don't care what kind of authority they claim because of the Bible or because of some anointing they supposedly have. I don't care what any self-appointed apostles, prophets, or faith healers tell you. Ask them how many people they have healed of COVID-19 and had the healing verified by doctors. If they are really healing people of real diseases, doctors should be able to verify it. So why are you taking medical advice from them? Whatever excuses they give for why they aren't healing anyone of COVID-19, don't believe it. If God really did anoint them to heal, they could heal this thing. It wouldn't be infecting over 50,000 people a day now because they would have stopped it in its tracks. I see unit, units in hospitals would not be filled to capacity because these so-called healers would go in and heal everyone like Jesus did. They didn't stop it because they can't. Why are you still listening to them? COVID-19 has proven every self-proclaimed prophet to be false and every faith healer to be fake. <sighs> All right, I've been getting worked up a little bit. I'm telling you about this because when COVID-19 fi finally gets under control and stops being a threat, I think they're going to do just the same as they did with Ebola. They will try to claim they stopped it with their prayers and declarations and taking authority over it. When we ask why it took so long, <laughs> they will say something like this one did. I kept battling it in the spirit and I couldn't find the right angle to attack it. But we kept fighting. We stood together, me and you, my partners. And together, we overwhelmed it with our prayers. Eventually. <laughs> Look, I understand why you would want to believe that. Especially when he tells you you were part of the body of believers who brought about the final defeat of Ebola. If I could have had any part in doing away with Ebola, I would have done it, whether it's prayer or wearing masks. And if I didn't know the data of how it kept spreading in spite of their prayers, I could have believed their claims. And if I'd been one of those partners who stood with him against Ebola in the spirit, Man, I would have felt good about myself. I was one of the prayer warriors who stood with this prophet and broke the grip of Ebola here and all over the world. If we did it with Ebola, we'll do it with COVID-19. And if you are responsible, or you think you're responsible for praying COVID-19 out of existence, you don't want to abandon your post. You're a prayer warrior doing battle with the principalities and powers that must be defeated in order to break the grip of the coronavirus here and around the world. But if he or anyone else really had that kind of authority over sickness and disease, it would not have taken eight months after that prayer meeting for Ebola to die out. It would never have spread to the U.S. at all because he would have stopped it in its tracks. And look at what's happening with COVID-19. It's the same thing, only spreading much wider and faster. Even after they said in March, you overwhelmed it with your prayers. Now I understand, coming out of the word of faith myself, you're probably thinking, you have to keep believing, no matter what the data or the evidence says. You've got to keep believing that you are praying, believing, and speaking the coronavirus out of existence. If you stop believing, it will not come to pass, and it will be your fault. You're afraid to stop believing that. 
Because if you stop believing, you have the authority of Christ over sickness and disease. You will stop believing in Christ. I understand. I've been there. I don't know if I can totally reassure you the way I've been reassured. All I will say is compare that with Jesus in the Gospels and the Apostles in the book of Acts. When they healed people, they were really healed. No one had to keep believing it in spite of the evidence or in spite of their symptoms. In fact, evidence of their healings was so obvious to everyone, it would not have been hard back then to find evidence that people were really being healed. It was so obvious even their enemies could not deny it. Compare that with modern faith healers and prophets, and they don't measure up. Ask them to produce one person who has been healed in their meetings, the healing lasted more than six months, and they have the medical records to prove it. They can't do it. Those healings you think you're, you see in those meetings are nothing more than a, the placebo effect. So if you're sick and you believe in Jesus, go ahead and pray to him. Ask friends at church to pray for you. <clears throat> but don't trust your health and well-being to any of these self-proclaimed prophets and healers. You might think you'll get better results if you go to the meeting of that preacher you saw on TV or YouTube or who wrote some book on how to believe God for your healing. You won't get any better results from them. You're not happy with how God is answering or not answering your prayers for healing or for getting rid of the coronavirus? You have to understand, God is, is sovereign. That is God's decision to make, not yours. And not that so-called prophet or healers either. The authority they claim to have over COVID-19 or any sickness or disease belongs to God alone and to Jesus Christ as the only begotten Son of God, who is now seated at God's right hand. You and that so-called faith healer have exactly the same authority as that preacher commanding COVID-19 to leave this nation and this earth. Meaning, none of us has that authority. If they did, or we did, with all the decreeing and commanding that's been directed at COVID-19, it would be gone. Not only is it not gone, it is spreading faster than ever. You might think your faith is not strong enough, or you are not holy enough, so you need that super apostle to lay hands and pray for you. The only thing they might be able to do for you is give you a temporary relief of symptoms because of the placebo effect. But that is not the same as really being healed, like what Jesus and the apostles did for people. And when your symptoms return, they will tell you one of two things. Either one, Keep believing you are healed and acting as if you are healed, no matter what your symptoms or how you feel. Two, you lost your healing because you stopped believing you were healed. Jesus and the apostles never said either of those things to people after they were healed. They didn't have to, because when they healed, they really healed. That should tell you everything you need to know about this type of doctrine and anyone preaching it and anyone claiming to have a gift or anointing to heal. Look, I know this is hard to hear. I believed in all of this my myself 
at one time. I believed it for years. I kept hearing stories of people getting healed, but never seeing it happen. I kept forcing myself to believe in spite of the evidence and in spite of my symptoms, like the Word of Faith doctrine teaches. I never got healed myself, and I never saw anyone who claimed to be healed in this way, really healed beyond a placebo effect. Eventually, you just have to face reality. I am not God, and neither are you. We don't have the power or authority to speak COVID-19 or any other sickness out of existence. And neither does the person on stage commanding it to go away. So no, you don't need that anointed one to pray for you. One of the founding doctrines of the Protestant Church is the priesthood of all believers. It says, if you belong to Christ, you don't need a priest or prophet to mediate between you and God, whether it's for forgiveness of sins, healing for yourself, healing for the nation, or in any other desire you have. You can go to Christ directly. Bring your requests before God in the name of Jesus Christ. The book of Hebrews says Jesus Christ is the mediator the mediator for us with God, not a priest, televangelist, or hum, any human authority. You're looking for someone with anointing to pray for you? Did you know Christ means anointed one? He has the anointing you want, not any of these fake healers who have not done one thing to heal or stop the spread of COVID-19. You want to ask him for healing? Just ask him. I've seen a few cases of people I knew who were healed of different illnesses. I don't know for sure that they qualify as miracles, but they impressed me. Not one of them involved a faith healer. They prayed, or they may have asked some friends to pray for them. But they did not see a faith healer. They did not give money to any of their ministries. They just prayed to the God they trusted in. And the first letter of John says, If we ask anything according to God's will, God hears us. But there's the rub. According to God's will. In the ministry of Jesus and those first apostles, they may have been able to wield gifts of healing, but only because it was according to God's will. After the first apostles, we don't find any credible reports of people wielding those gifts in the same way. Why? Because within God's will, those gifts had already served their purpose. Anyone today who gets healed through prayer, it is because it it was according to God's will. It had nothing to do with anyone claiming gifts of healing or anointing to heal. It had nothing to do with believing and receiving their healing. And it certainly had nothing to do with sowing a seed for your need. In case you're not familiar with that, this is a doctrine that says you can Sow a seed for what you pray for by giving money to a particular ministry. You cannot buy answers to prayer with money. This is just one more way the wolves in sheep's clothing have of fleecing you. Jesus told Peter, feed my sheep, not fleece my sheep. If you believe, as I do, that Jesus and the apostles really had a gift or anointing, or whatever you want to call it, to heal the sick. You should remember, they never charged anyone money for it. And Peter made it very clear to Simon Magus that the very idea of charging money for spiritual gifts is offensive to God. 
So whatever you pray for, trust God and trust Christ. Do not trust anyone claiming to be a faith healer. And certainly, do not trust any so-called prophets whose predictions do not come true. Thanks for watching. I hope this has been helpful and that you will come back for another episode. Until then, remember these words from Matthew 7, 12. In everything, do to others as you would have them do to you. For this is the law and the prophets. Grace and peace to you.